Hello, this is going to be a set of tutorials on creating a crate. So I'll show you what we're going to make. This is going to be the final thing. Um, and essentially the idea with this is to do something really simple, but to do it to a, a nice high standard. So you can see in this that I've got good material definition. So my metal is, is looking like metal, my wood's looking like wood. Uh, the the areas of rust are paint hand painted into certain areas where you'd expect to get rust. The same with the sort of the dents and the scratches. Uh, we've got nice normal maps on our wood for a bit of detail where they're breaking up uh, in the areas that they're they're being pinched against other things. that's about it really so it's a very simple object but it's done to a pretty high standard certainly I'd expect this would be a high enough standard to go into pretty much any any game engine and yeah so let's just quickly go over what we're gonna do we're gonna do a full the full process for creating uh, and a game ready asset so you can take this once you've once you've mastered the art of making a crate you can take this and you should be able to go and make something much more complicated so we're going to start off with a high poly model in 3ds max and this is just going to be really simple so this is the high poly that i've got and it's not you, you can see i've not bothered about putting, I've not sculpted this, I've not put in the scratches and the areas where the rust are and all that kind of stuff. We're going to do that in Endo, which I believe is, is by far and away the fastest way of doing it. But what we have got is we've got nice edges, so the, the wood, the edges of the wood are much wider than the edges of the metal, and they're already hinting at the material definition. You know, the, these edges are already telling us something about what this material is and that it's a different material to this one. So we'll do a nice clean high poly. And once we've done that, we will go on to the low poly. So this is the low poly here. And the main thing with the low poly is going to be to make sure that we don't waste any verts. So making sure that we don't have things like edge loops going around the top here where we don't need them. Every vert that's in this object now is doing something to the form of the object. So if I removed any one of these verts like that, then it would it would break the object. And that's what you need to do with your low polys. Keep them you can see there's loads of detail in this. I've modeled in you know this is definitely a very next gen asset so there is a there is an awful lot modeled into this like these these little pieces of metal down here you could get away with doing those with a normal map but you can do this stuff in next gen that's fine you, what you can't do those waste verts so if you want to use more verts and make your model more interesting then that's that's a good way to go just don't use verts that aren't necessary then we'll unwrap it, so I'll just quickly show you the unwrap. The unwrap is, is one of the most important parts. We want to make sure that we use our texture space as well as we possibly can. We want to be aware of things like smoothing groups, so you can see where, where these go around different smoothing groups. I've separated them out into different UV islands, and that's going to be really important when we do our bake. So all of that's going to be in 3ds Max, and the next thing we're going to do is to bake an ambient occlusion and a normal map. I'm going to use X normal for that, which I'll talk a bit about when we get to that. So our normal map is going to look like this. It's just a nice, clean normal map with a bit of padding on it, and we're going to bake out bake out an AO that will look like that. So this is going to go into our normal map in Marmoset 2 and into our ambient occlusion in Marmoset 2. And once we've done that, if I can find my plan, 
we're going to go on and texture this. So we're going to add to the normal map using Endo. So if I turn these back on, you can see we've put in the text in Endo. So that's actually a little bit indented into the surface. We've obviously put in the wood grain here. We've added detail around the edges. So this, this kind of detail in here that you can see on the wood is all in the normal map. We've added areas where the rust are. We've added things like these rivets. So that's these rivets here. And all of this is done in ND2. And it, the nice thing about this is that uh, it was really fast to do. In fact, even the these gaps in the wood were put in in ND2. But Although we've done them in Endo 2, it's not just as simple as, as drawing a line. You can see there's actually some detail in all of these gaps and they're slightly broken up and not a completely straight line, which is just adding to the, the look of this being a bit old and worn down. So we'll do our normal map. We'll then do a diffuse map, which will look something like this. So the diffuse map is going to be we're going to start off with some some very simple base materials for wood and for metal and then we're going to paint in hand paint in some detail onto our wood so we're hand painting in some dark areas some areas where it's got wear some light areas where it's been smoothed down a bit areas where it's got damp and started to uh, discolor a bit and we'll paint in hand paint in rust don't want that one. And some some more rust. Uh, I don't know what these are. And there's some there's some dirt overlays on that as well. So it's a really simple diffuse map, but it's not. It's still got a bit more to it than just a uh, just some base textures. So we'll do that. We'll also go on to okay. So we'll finish our ambient occlusion map, which will be down from Endo 2. We will then go on to do a metallic map and a microsurface map. So our metallic map is just going to tell us which bits of this are metal, which is obviously these bits and which bits aren't. So generally this is this is a very simple map. Uh, the only thing that's maybe a little bit more, there's got a little bit more to it than it being plain metal or, or not metal is the areas where the rust are so we've made sure that the rust isn't reflecting light and it's not shining in the same way that these metal parts are there's a distinct material definition to that and the same with these areas of dirt and so on and we'll create a microsurface map as well and this is going to be based off some physically correct materials so we're going to get some material values from the internet that will will give us a really good basis and starting point to get the values correct for this. And then finally, we'll put it all into Marmoset 2 and do a render of it. So hopefully we should end up with something like this presented reasonably well as a portfolio piece. So it's, again, it's a really, really simple object, but done to a pretty high standard. And I think it's best to start with something simple like this. And then you can, once you've got this down, you can go on and you can, you, at least you can easily make barrels and all that kind of stuff. But then you can take that and do much more complex objects and start to build up large environments. Okay, so that's it. and. We'll get started with the high poly in the next video.